The minority in parliament is demanding that President Akufuado ensures the immediate arrest and prosecution of the directors of Lamens Investment Africa, the company accused of allegedly repackaging and distributing expired rice to some senior high schools earlier this year. Leading the charge, Samuel Okujetua Blackwa is also calling for urgent national medical screening of all senior high school students who have consumed the alleged contaminated rice. Allegations of 22,000 bags of expired rice imported from India, illegally repackaged as made in Ghana rice and distributed to schools have been at the center of controversy over the past few days. The NDC caucus in parliament have described the recent happenings as a criminal conspiracy of state institutions to endanger the lives of students in senior high schools. Devious criminal conspiracy and the complicity of state institutions to endanger the lives of thousands of helpless teenagers in senior high school and trusted under their care by callously rebagging over 22,000 50 kg of expired and con contaminated Moshosho rice from India and distributing same to our schools. Headmasters have complained about receiving rice without expiry dates. And they tell us that when they raise concerns, they were threatened. And so regret regrettably, they had to keep mute and just accept the rice like that. The minority in parliament is demanding swift action against those behind the distribution of the alleged expired rice led by Samuel Okuyotua Blackwa. They are calling for arrests, prosecutions, investigations and a national health screening for affected students. There is the need for an urgent national medical screening exercise. President Akufuado and Vice President Baumia cannot remain silent on this grave matter. Punish culprits who are largely their appointees. The NDC caucus also demands the immediate arrest and prosecution of the directors of Lamens Investment Africa Limited. The board and management of the National Food Buffer Stock Company must be sanctioned. The Ministry of Education must be probed. The North Town MP is worried over the potential health implications of students who have consumed the rice. It encompasses immediate digestive systems, potential allergic reactions, long-term health risks, including chronic inflammation, liver disease, and nutritional deficiency. The long-term impacts are insidious, potentially leading to irreversible health consequences. The minority insists this matter must not be swept under the carpet. Right, so let's say on this subject, very, very interesting subject where many parents and, uh, you know, those who have been following have shared varied opinions on it. Let's find out what the Ministry of Education has to say following this revelation. Kwesi Kwating, spokesperson for the Ministry of Education. Mr. Kwating, good evening. Thank you for joining us on News 360. To start with, uh, the last time we spoke to you when this issue came out, um, you said that the ministry had set up a team to probe the allegations. Have you been able to establish whether there is any preliminary issue to deal with? And what were those findings if you did? Very good evening to you. Uh, I have, we have updated the public accordingly. Uh, if you recall my earlier post about two days ago, we stated uh, clearly that our findings revealed uh, that uh, despite the comments that had been made by uh, the Honorable Samuel Okujetua Blackwa, which we welcomed in good faith and also assured Ghanaians of uh, uh, making an inquiry into it, it came out that the Food and Drugs Authority, the agency responsible uh, for making a determination as to the safety and wholesomeness of a food. Of course, in this context, the food that were to be supplied to uh, the schools in question had apparently declared that the food that were distributed to these schools were safe and wholesome for consumption. And so that is the uh, finding that we made. And of course, for us in the Ministry of Education, when the matter came up, we were deeply concerned. It is the more reason why we even initially 
and the statement that I brought earlier even indicated how serious and critical we, we, we take the matter. And we are very uh, satisfied and happy that uh, beyond anything, uh, we can confirm that this food that got to our students was wholesome and, and, and safe. Mr. Watson, you say the FDA from preliminary investigations said that the, those particular uh, bags of rice were wholesome and did not have any challenges. Is that, is that the point you're making? Yes, that determination had been made by FDA even before the supplies were made. Uh, I will share the letter with you, but I, I think it's a, it's a document that I've even shared on social media. And FDA has copies, the company has copies, even Mr. Blapa himself has copies. Uh, when they uh, extended the day before date to the uh, 30th of April 2024, in their letter that they sent or communicated the correspondence that they made with the company, they were very clear that uh, the day before date had been extended based on the, the, test, the test that the FDA carried right. uh, to 30th of April. And so until the 30th of, of April, the food was still also very safe for consumption. Right. The other key players within the value chain that the um, North Star MP mentioned in his um, issue when he raised it include the Buffer Stock Company Limited, for instance, and then Lamens, which is the company that we are told imported uh, the rice into the country. Then along the value chain, we're told that the bags of rice were changed, or the bag that contained the rice were changed into other bags. They were repackaged. Has all of this come to your attention, and how does this come to you, considering the fact that, first of all, having to even change the containers, which is the bags that contain the rice, raises suspicion? Yeah, first of all, I, I think we have to discuss this uh, story within the whole holistic context. Uh, it is not disputed that, indeed, uh, the consignment that came into the country by December 2023, uh, it was very close or near to its uh, shelf life in terms of the date that had been uh, been on the original labeling, being the best before date. But of course, uh, the company had apparently written to uh, FDA with the aim of seeking to extend the best before date. Right. FDA had to uh, require certain tests on the product before they extended it. But after that was granted, the company, again, from the findings that we made, wrote to FDA and requested FDA to give them an approval. And based on that approval, the company was going to do a repackaging. Of course, if you had read the earlier notice that we brought out, mm. according to the company, they were just doing that to prevent issues of backlash because, I mean, people may not really get the whole understanding as to how the product is labeled within a specific date where the best before date was supposed to be elapsed and then an extension has been granted. Okay. So it was that approval that was denied by the FDA. That is where even the company found themselves in trouble when the FDA decided to find them an amount of 100000 Hmm. So even with regards to the fine, the fine was in relation to the repackaging, the fact that they did not get approval for the repackaging hmm. and not the wholesomeness of the food. Of course, I, I, I do not have the capacity, the authority, even the expertise to make such determination as to whether or not the food is wholesome. I mean, likewise, okay. the Ministry of Education. Uh, but FDA made such that determination, and I'm sure, uh, obviously, they aligned with their own internal protocols to be able to arrive with that conclusion. All right. So the most fundamental question is whether or not the food was wholesome and mm. safe. And that the FDA has answered in the affirmative that yes, the food was safe. The second question as to whether they had approval to rebag the food, they didn't have that approval. And that is how come the FDA uh, slashed the fine on them. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm sure that uh, certainly in the coming days we'll try and get further understanding of how all of this plays out. Uh, Kwesi Kwating is the uh, head of public relations for the Ministry of Education.
Imoni is tonight more than 300 enrolled nurses from the 2020 year group across the country on Monday stormed the premises of the Greater Accra Regional Health Directorate over government failure to engage them after going through due procedure. Stanley Nibli, who has been following up on this development. This category of nurses have been at home after duly writing and passing their licensure examination and obtaining their pins in 2020. The nurses subsequently heaved a sigh of relief when the Ghana Health Service announced the activation of its portal for recruitment. On Monday, the enrolled nurses, some of whom are lactating mothers, numbering over 300, reported to the Greater Accra Regional Health Directorate to be absorbed into the system. But they had the shock of their lives when the human resource manager at the health directorate told them that only 30 nurses are needed to satisfy the quota given to the region. The 30 nurses will be posted to the Dan East and West districts, where human capital in the health sector is in short supply. But these developments did not go down well with the unposted nurses. It's pathetic. Finished with for. I feel like crying. Serious. It's not easy. Some people depend on their parents for money. How your parents cater for you for four good years, you can't pay them back with anything. Veronica Anoche was not happy and called for an immediate intervention. It's not fair. But as at now, we don't know what to do. And it's unfortunate we have to go back home. A senior member of the Greater Accra Regional Health Directorate later engaged the nurses and asked them to go home, emphasizing that nothing could be done to exceed the quota that the region has been given. I will advise that you go home so we get directed from headquarters. If they give us another, then it means we will not add on. But for now, the attention is exhausted and we can't take any more. Eventually, the enrolled nurses had to leave the premises disappointed. The Ghana Health Service activated its portal for the recruitment of 6,000 nurses of all categories nationwide after the Ministry of Finance had issued clearance. However, the Greater Accra region was just allocated a quota of 122. After the exhaustion of the 30 slots allocated to the enrolled nurses, the remaining 92 quota is expected to cater for other nursing categories, including midwives, general nursing, and nursing officers. But the nurses want the quota system reviewed to make room to absorb more health workers whose services are needed but are staying at home. Stanley Nibleu, TV3 News, Accra.